Well, if we pull out and, and pull the rug out from under people who've been working with us and depending on us, um, you run the risk of having an outcome closer to Vietnam, mm -hmm. where, uh, where the, uh, the people that we're working with collapse and get overrun by... Uh, you gamed every other kind of strategy when you were preparing this. So let's, let's just, for a hypothetical, and I know this might be a stretch for you, but let's say you, you, you become a consultant to the Obama or Clinton campaign, whoever gets the nomination, and they, they want to get out. And they just say to you, and, you're, and your, your job is to make it happen, is there a scenario you could come up with that would, that would meet either of their goals of getting out of there? Well, is we're going, we're go I mean, I, there is nobody who doesn't want to get out in a sense. No, but I'm just asking so, you, is, is there a way you could, could, that you could figure it out? The, when, when you talk about getting out, I assume what you mean is ending, our, com un ending our combat role. In yes. Iraq, no, 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 no more no, combat. No, no for more, American no forces. more Americans being killed. Right. Yeah. And I think that's the measure for many right. people. Right. And and that doesn't mean by by the way necessarily getting out entirely. Well, we have embassies you, all over the world. We have embassies. We also have forces in yes. various countries in in Japan, in Korea, in Germany. Mm -hmm. So you could wind up with a situation where we continue to have forces in well, Iraq, I don't think but they're not in combat. Any, I think that that's accepted by most. No, people I, I think so as, too. Yeah. But it's useful to clarify that because right. people use the phrase "get out." And that there's no one last and American one of the dangers, anywhere no, But it. one of the dangers of loose terminology of that kind yes, is well, we I'm debate... Well, of that well, I'm de No, but it's an important point. We debate things here in America, and we often debate them using very loose terminology. Yeah. But what important people, like our presidential mm -hmm. candidates, say, even if it's loose terminology, gets listened to and weighed extremely carefully abroad. Yes. And it can have very serious, harmful, unintended consequences. Mm -hmm. And so a phrase like get out, which suggests... Okay, well, what's the phrase you would find to be more... Well, as I, I mean, I think what you were driving at is the idea that the United States would stop being engaged in combat in Iraq. Okay, well... And we might have forces there, we might not, but we're not, we're not doing combat. I mean, as we, as we still, as I said, have forces in... You know, after World War II, we left forces in Germany and Japan. After the Korean War, we left forces in Korea. Some others might say give Iraq back to the Iraqis. Well, I'm all in favor. Of, I was all in favor of that from the beginning, well, as you know in the book. Didn't but you get it done. <laughs> um, the Iraqis right now are running their own government. The issue is, can they get to the point where their capacity, their political capacity, their security force capacity, their general governance capacities, are such that they can handle their ongoing problems largely on their own? Well, by and, my by my hypothesis, new president inaugurated January twentieth of next year. I think they're both talking about timetables that are just a matter of months. How realistic is that? I don't know about a matter of months. I mean, it's uh, the or do you think what, they'll change has, their tunes? When what they we've get... seen, what we've seen over the last nine months or so, mm -hmm. and this is the the the, um, the essence of the testimony that General Petraeus and Ambassador Crocker. Mm -hmm. Uh, have given to the Congress, and, and uh, I think most people are generally familiar with it. What we've seen in the last nine months or so is that the, the capacity of Iraqi security forces has increased. Their military forces more than their police, but it's been, there's been a substantial improvement in the ability of Iraqi forces to do the counterinsurgency work on their own. Mm -hmm. With some help from us, but not necessarily uh, always combat help. I mean, we can provide various kinds of rear area services to them, uh, logistic support, intelligence, medical, and other right. kinds of help. But, but they're doing the combat more and more, and they're doing it better than they were in the past. So that's one aspect. Another aspect is their government is actually improving its ability to function and handle things administratively. They're sharing resources more. They're getting mm -hmm. some more legislation. So there's there's some political um, steps in the right direction also. If that continues, then you could get to the point, and, and you have some very significant uh, decreases in overall right. violence in the country. Now, as, as General Petraeus emphasized rightly, all of these things are reversible, so you don't want to be just mindlessly projecting straight lines of, of, of all these good trends, but it's worth noting that there have been some good trends. 
And if those good trends continue and they don't get reversed and the, the violence diminishes and the capacity mm -hmm. of the Iraqis increases in these various areas, it, it's entirely realistic that you could get to the point where continuing American support for the Iraqis will what, be non-combat. What's the, what's the calendar on, on, on your side? Uh, I don't know. That, it, McCain, uh, McCain is saying 20, 2013. He's saying that he's saying that uh, American troops that if that he, he pl actually pledged this this morning, he said that the Iraq War can be won and most American troops can come home by 2013, if he is elected president. I, I don't know what his assumptions are in saying that. What the con what's his concept of? Well, of when you American hear it, do you, is your first reaction like doable or not doable? Well, it, it all depends on what, what he he's says. Assuming. McCain, he would say only that a small contingent of troops in non-combat roles would remain in Iraq five years from now. That could be again. We're we're in Germany since 1945. So uh, I mean, if you're but talking about troops, it's a change of what he said before. That's why I wondered your reaction to it. Look, it is it. It's very hard to. Uh, it's very hard to make projections. If you had asked somebody a year ago, where are we going to be in Iraq today? Mm -hmm. It would have been a very bold person who would have said you're going to have as much progress on these various fronts. With the you know the the uh, the Shiite mm -hmm. uh, uh, al Sadr maintaining a ceasefire, uh, the Sunni tribal leadership having completely switched its strategy. It used to be allied with Al Qaeda and fighting America. Now it's allied with the United States and it's mm -hmm. fighting Al Qaeda. I mean, if you would asked a year ago, I mean, almost nobody would have given you a a uh, a prediction that would have been as positive as where we wound up a year later, mm -hmm. and. As I said, these things are reversible, so uh, you have to be cautious. Are you? But, uh, anyway, I, I'm not. I, I don't put a lot of stock in in people, you know, trying to do trying crystal to make, ball projections. Do, do 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 you consider yourself a political person? Do you follow the campaign? Do you listen to what they're saying? Yeah, do you have a candidate? Um, I, I'm not. I, I'm I'm not enormously political, and I'm not politically engaged in this campaign, but. Um, You've My interest in, you've has worked, always been much more in national security policy than in right, politics. You've worked in two White Houses. You've right. worked in the Reagan administration and, and Bush, obviously. If, if McCain were to win, would you want to go back again in another Republican administration? Uh, no, I, I would not expect to go back. You're, because they might not want you or because you wouldn't no, want to? Either way. I mean, I, I just... It's uh, not a I, convergence I'm, of... At, at the moment, I'm, uh, I'm happy doing uh, more being out, scholarly being out, pursuits. Being out in the cold. Um, did did you are you and Rumsfeld friends? Yes. Um, I mean, I didn't know him before he hired me for this job. But and we, you were quite we, intimidated when he hired you. He's, that, that was he's a, a formidable guy. That seemed like a traumatic moment for you. In fact, you had to go back a second time, right? Yeah, the first interview didn't go well. Why? Well, he's uh, he he has a way of you, of purposefully throwing people for a loop to see how they. But handle you thought it. you performed poorly in front of him. I do indeed. Okay. I, I tell that story in the book. Right, and in the there we got one. Um, but um, but what 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 does Rumsfeld want to see in a person? What did he want to see in a person that you didn't bring to that first meeting and that you brought to the second one? Um, well, what, I mean, what threw me in the first meeting was he started asking me bureaucratic questions when I thought we were going to be talking about policy. And, you and, to be and he was, somewhere. I mean, I had been out of the Pentagon at that point for uh, 15 years. Yeah. And he started asking me how I would reorganize my office. And I basically didn't, I mean, I, I didn't know how the office at the time precisely was organized, mm -hmm. let alone how I would reorganize it. So, I mean, that was one of the things that, that, uh, that gotcha. threw me. Yeah. But, um, what in general he was looking for in, in people that he was hiring or people who were briefing him, he was looking for people who knew their brief, yeah. people who knew their material, who could answer questions three and four and five levels mm -hmm. beyond what, they were, what they were saying. He, he tested people. Uh, he was looking for precision, people who spoke vaguely or ambiguously had a very hard time with him mm -hmm. because he would he would seize on uh, on on a vague phrase or an ambiguous <laughs> phrase and and poke right at it and ask for clarification and if if the person was hiding behind ambiguity I mean sometimes when you speak you don't speak as precisely as you would if you were writing yeah. and if the, if the person could recover and say no that wasn't the best phrase what I really meant was this and he could give him a good clear answer that was fine 